Delegations from both Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad arrived in Cairo for meetings with Egyptian intelligence officers. Hamas chief Ismail Haniye and PIJ Secretary General Ziad al nakhale both leading their delegations. On the agenda there, the discussion of the ongoing ceasefire efforts that Israel brokered with them following Operation Shield and Arrow last month. Reports are indicating, though, that Cairo conditioned with the heads of both groups to attend, explaining that the new round of talks between the officials will discuss highly sensitive and potentially confidential information. Let's bring in Neri Zilber, a journalist and adjunct fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Thank you so much for being with us. It's interesting the timing of their visit, but reports in Arabic media did say that they were supposed to come sometime last month, but they didn't because of the escalation between PIJ and Israel inside the Gaza Strip. A couple weeks ago also, the Palestinian Authority and their representatives were in Egypt for the same kind of meetings. What do you think? So uh, it's not unusual to have even the Palestinian militant factions and their leaders uh, go to Cairo. It happens quite regularly. We saw that even a few weeks ago during the escalation with Israel. Uh, Islamic Jihad representatives and Hamas representatives uh, were in Cairo. Uh, Egypt was obviously the mediator that brought the, the multi-day escalation to a close. Uh, by the way, Hamas wasn't a party to that escalation, so they were still involved regardless. Uh, and yes, Egypt has been playing this mediating role. Um, it's probably trying to tamp down any potential escalations and tensions moving forward. That's nothing out of the ordinary. And like you said, the timing I don't think is coincidental. Uh, we just saw a deadly terror attack from an Egyptian security official uh, just two days ago, uh, three Israelis dead. Uh, it's likely a very good and positive reminder from Cairo to all parties, whether Israel, uh, the rest of the Arab world, and even Washington, uh, that it has a positive role to play in the region, uh, despite what you know a rogue, lone uh, security official may have done a few days ago. Do you think there's going to be anything fruitful to come of these talks that the dele the delegations here will go back to Gaza and say, all right, I have this concrete type of rules that I'm now going to follow. Is that a possibility here? Uh, I don't believe so, because we have to take into consideration, number one, Islamic Jihad was the one party uh, out of the Palestinian factions uh, through the multi-day escalation the other day, uh, the other week rather, um, and there was no real agreement with Israel via Egypt for anything to come out of that escalation. It was essentially quiet for quiet, we'll stop shooting the Israelis, we'll stop bombing. Uh, so Islamic Jihad has nothing to give and really is likely not requesting anything that Israel is liable to be able to give politically and militarily. Hamas is a different story. Uh, for quite some time now, even just a number of years, uh, there have been speculations via Egypt as well uh, that there was a grand bargain to be had, a wide-scale arrangement, a long-term hudna, uh, ceasefire essentially is ceasing of a hostility between Hamas and Israel. That has not come to fruition for one important reason. Uh, Hamas still retains the two bodies of slain Israeli soldiers and two uh, Israeli citizens and civilians uh, inside Gaza. That is a separate deal to be had. Uh, they oftentimes bring up, we see various reports uh, here and there about a deal uh, on that issue, the prisoners and the bodies. Uh, but that the bar to concluding that kind of deal is very, very high. Uh, the minimum Hamas is willing to accept um, goes far beyond what Israel is willing to give. Uh, we're talking perhaps, you know, several hundreds, if not a thousand Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. Uh, Israel is not willing to do that. And uh, for Hamas's end, there's nothing to talk about if they're not willing to release those prisoners. Um, so no, I'm, I'm skeptical whether anything tangible will come of these delegations in Cairo at the moment. Well, look, before Hamas and PIJ arrived, the Palestinian Authority was there, not at the same time. Last month in Saudi, the Palestinian Authority and a delegation from Hamas were in the kingdom at the same time, not meeting directly, but the Saudis relaying messages from each to the other. Are the Egyptians doing the same thing? Uh, the Egyptians uh, try to mediate between not only Israel and the Palestinian faction, but also within the Palestinian faction themselves, primarily Hamas and Fatah, which runs the Palestinian Authority. Um, so again, nothing out of the ordinary, but I think the bar to a Hamas-Palestinian uh, Authority slash Fatah reconciliation is probably a lot higher than a Hamas-Israel uh, long-term hudna. Uh, so we have to keep that into perspective. Uh, overall, diplomatically, the Palestinian Authority is playing catch-up to Hamas and the Palestinian factions. Um, Hamas was in Saudi Arabia, and then the Palestinian Authority came, uh, the Hamas and PI Jay were in Cairo and then the Palestinian Authority came. Uh, really, diplomatically, the Palestinian Authority is nowhere to be found. We have to remember that Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, uh, during the multi-day escalation just a, the, a few weeks ago, um, actually left the West Bank and traveled uh, to America to give a talk at the UN while uh, Israel and the Gaza Strip were at open war. Uh, so again, uh, the Palestinian Authority is likely more concerned about its own domestic politics than the kind of regional gambit maybe coming out of Cairo.
Mary Zilber, live with us in the studio this afternoon. Thank you. My pleasure.